What's up, everybody? Welcome to part 16 and the second part of texturing the Jigga. So I actually um, had just finished recording and um, right at the end of the video, my computer decided to uh, crash the program. So that's that's great. <laughs> I swear there's nothing, nothing that can go wrong with technology or nothing that can go right. Everything can go wrong. So um, here I am just using that stencil that I created um, and just trying to apply some sort of texture and break, break the similarity, sim similarness, similarityness. I don't know. I'm not very good at English, but I'm just using this tool to break up the um, brush strokes that I had before. And I actually am quite happy with how it kind of turned out. It was kind of a mistake using the clouds brush, um, but I like it. I like how it looks. So now I'm just trying to fix up those strange lightning bolts that I have going on. Um, and I'm using that uh, stabilized stroke to kind of help drag the lines out a little bit nicer. And I also changed my fall off. I believe it's on sharp or sharper. Um, and yeah, it kind of worked out for me. And now I'm using the clone stamp tool and just cleaning up an area that was giving me um, some grief or I just, I really just didn't like the way it looked. going to use that texture again and start applying it to the face. Now I'll go back to using the draw brush and I'm just applying a little bit of a darker gray to some scales that I feel could be a nice contrast.
and I'll be using that texture to also break up the white line that I have going down its face. I wasn't planning on showing the, I guess, alterations of the maps that I baked, but I thought I would include it because I had so many issues with subsurf. And I think it's because I went a little too um, uh, hardcore, I guess, with trying to make it like as realistic as possible, if that makes sense. So found myself going back and forth a lot with this map and then at some point I was just like you know what it doesn't need to be perfect so I just I changed a lot of what uh, wasn't working now I'm gonna start painting the teeth and I do this by using a gradient probably would have been a little easier if I just selected um, one tooth and then just applied the paint to it, but I selected everything, so all three UV spaces got selected. Sometimes I notice that the gradient um, creates like these weird spikes in the colors, if you could see right by that tooth. Um, I don't know why it does that, and it did it to this area here, which I was not happy about, so I had to go ahead and fix that. I used the clone stamp tool. And those um, random streaks of color is because I was using the brush, draw brush, and applying um, some color at like an angle so it bled through on other parts of the body. So the eye was interesting. Um, Oh, also the eye, uh, I actually got from a course that I purchased, but I went ahead and I kind of tweaked it to be like my own in Photoshop. Um, so the eye was interesting because when I would paint it in the 3D space, it covered the whole entire um, mesh. But if you look at it in the UV image editor, you could see that the paint didn't cover the entire UV space. So this was really confusing because I had applied the scale and um, the, I don't know what the reason why it wouldn't paint the entire eye. Um, I found it very strange. And I do end up changing it because, or I end up repainting because I was not happy with the result that I am that I have right now it looks very like rushed and drafted so I end up just redoing it So what I'll do here is I'll actually end up using um, a color or a gradient. I 
I think I'm just, right now I'm just trying to figure out why the UV space is different in the editor than it is in the 3D world. Now I'm going back in and tweaking the subsurf and I'm definitely darkening it down, darkening it down and toning down the values. Sometimes I would use the paint tool and with this, with parts of the mess, mesh selected, I would go into the UV editor and I would try to drop it onto the selected parts of the mesh and it would actually end up painting the entire map. So I was confused at times as to why that was happening. And you'll see I run into that issue probably pretty soon. fixing up the eye because I realized when I was painting the eye that the eye was all um, was not working so I just went ahead and adjusted that using individual origins and now I'm parenting everything but uh, strangely enough nothing was parenting Sometimes it would parent and then when I would move it the next time it would unparent so I don't I don't know I did have a an armature in the scene so I'm not sure if that was causing some issues with the parenting So I'm looking at my fingernails right now, or not my actual fingernails, but the dinosaur fingernails. And I'm realizing that the subsurf uh, map is still a little bit too high in value. So I'm going through and I'm darkening it, but I'm actually darkening it in the base color because I was having issues with the gradient um, dropping it onto the actual subsurf map without dropping it over the entire map. So. Um, eventually I just decided to quickly hand paint, but by painting on the base color, um, by making it essentially black, uh, that also helped with the light as it helped, um, I guess, keep as much light out of the nails than was previously going through before because the nails were lighter. So hopefully I hope that makes sense. And this will conclude the end of the walkthrough videos. I do have some bonus content coming out, so I will see you soon and take care.